Stephen Moser is up next. But first, some news. The communist Chinese government in recent weeks has been stepping up its suppression of protesters seeking to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. According to Amnesty International, police have detained or arrested dozens of activists in the lead up to the June 4th anniversary earlier this week. They have also threatened the relatives of those killed at Tiananmen Square in an effort to silence anyone seeking political reform. And China has begun using the teachings of sixth century philosopher Confucius to bring religious groups more in line with what they're calling Chinese cultural character. President Xi has started a harsh crackdown on religious practice, targeting Christianity and Islam in particular, using Confucianism to inspire patriotism and counter what the government considers foreign influence. More of that on our next segment. And joining me now from Florida to explain is the president of the Population Research Institute and author of the book Bully of Asia, Why China's Dream is the New Threat to World Order. I spoke earlier with Steve Mosher. Steve, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Raymond. On September 30th, 2015, according to those Figueredo letters that were dropped last week, despite restrictions placed on him, Cardinal Theodore McCarrick continued to travel on diplomatic missions. Now, shortly after the Pope's trip to the United States, McCarrick wrote to Francis saying, when you greeted me so cheerfully in Washington as an adjunct member of the Foreign Service, I received this as a challenge to continue as an amateur in the very noble work of the foreign relations of the Holy See. I've maintained on a quiet level our relationship with China. Uh, Steve, this letter clearly points out that McCarrick was continuing his work in China, d these diplomatic missions, despite the restrictions on him. What do you make of this letter and these revelations? Well, I think that it's clear that, that McCarrick was uh, freelancing here, but freelancing, I think, with the permission of Vatican officials who looked the other way while he continued to gallivant around the world. I, I think one of the reasons we're having uh, so many problems in China in the aftermath of the Sino-Vatican deal is that veal deal was negotiated by Cardinal McCarrick. Now, mm -hmm. you don't want to have someone with with all kinds of personal deficiencies being your chief negotiator with a country mm -hmm. like China. If they know you have uh, weaknesses, uh, like uh, McCarrick had obvious weaknesses, mm -hmm. they're going to take advantage of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Was he seduced by honeypots when he was in China? Who knows? We do know that he negotiated a very bad deal, which is now turning out to be uh, a disaster for Chinese Catholics. Churches in China are being destroyed, and not just Raymond, uh, churches of the underground church. Right. There are patriotic churches in China which are supposed to be approved by the government that are being leveled. Other churches are being told they must donate their facilities to the government, otherwise they will be raised to the ground. This is not how the deal was supposed to play out. Hmm. In another letter to Pope Francis in January of 2016, McCarrick writes, and it substantiates some of what you're talking about, Steve, I've not been back to China since the fall, but I've received some indication to continue with conversations with some of the leaders of that great country. I have always been in touch with Cardinal Parolin and his staff, and I believe that they are peaceful with my continuing to foster another channel for possible future discussions. Now, Parolin has been credited with this Vatican-China deal. He was on the forefront of it. It seems that McCarrick may have played a role as well. How large a role do you think, Steve? Oh, I, I think his role was huge. He was going to China at a time when very few other Vatican officials were getting directly involved with that country. And so I think the basic outlines of the deal were put in place by McCarrick, oh, maybe 10 years ago. Remember, McCarrick mm -hmm. was actually the first Vatican uh, official or emissary, if you want to call him that, mm -hmm. to be featured in a Global Times article. The Global mm -hmm. Times is a, a communist propaganda broadsheet, and they had a very flattering interview with Cardinal McCarrick back in 2008, talking about uh, normalizing relations between the Vatican and China. And I think it was that basic pattern, that basic outline negotiated by McCarrick mm. um, that, that was later signed by the Vatican and signed by a junior uh, minister of the Vatican of the Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China. Hmm. Now, since the signing of that China-Vatican deal, and you alluded to this uh, moments ago, the persecution of the church and adjunct churches 
have only gotten worse. The deal allows for the Communist Party to choose bishops. Churches have been leveled. How much of this do you blame on the Vatican? Well, I think going into the agreement, even before it was inked last September, the Vatican should have known, I mean, for goodness sake, I sat down with Cardinal Paroline for an hour last May and told him that the new regulations, the new restrictions on religious freedom in China that had come into place on February 1st were preventing minors from going to church, were requiring that all churches, including the underground, be registered with the government, mm -hmm. were requiring that all religious activities be conducted only on church grounds, that required the ending of catechism classes, the ending of summer mm -hmm. camps, the ending of even things like soup kitchens and orphanages run by the Catholic Church, that would no longer be permitted. So the walls were already closing it in February. Mm -hmm. And then two months later, they moved control of all religious affairs away from the Chinese government to the Chinese Communist Party, which is officially atheistic. So from May of last year, the United Front Department of the Chinese Communist Party was in charge of all religious affairs in China. That was, again, a very, very bad sign for any semblance, wow. any minor degree of religious freedom in China. Hmm. So the Vatican knew all this going in, and yet they signed the agreement anyway. And what we see now is the Sino-Vatican agreement is being used by Beijing as a cover for increasing persecution, not just of Catholics, hmm. but of, of evangelicals, of home churches, of even uh, Tibetan Buddhists, of Muslims, of all the rest. Because the argument is, look, the Vatican has agreed to allow us to name religious leaders in China. Why shouldn't you, the Tibetan mm -hmm. Buddhists, allow us to name the next Dalai Lama? Why shouldn't you, the, the Taoists or the Buddhists, do whatever we tell you to do in terms of religious activity? Wow. In a recent interview with the Global Times, which, as you mentioned, is the official newspaper of the communist government, Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin said that the channels of communication between the two countries, the Vatican and China, are working very well. He said the dialogue between the Catholic Church and China flows from Pope Francis's desire to avoid debating differences over their respective values. The Holy See and China are not discussing theories about their respective systems, nor do they want to reopen questions which by now belong to history. It is practical solutions that the Pope is seeking with regard to the lives of real people who desire to practice their faith peacefully and offer a positive contribution to their own country. Uh, the, this is a regime who doesn't believe in, in freedom of religion. China's an atheist, communist regime. What do you make of those comments? Is that just naivete, or what do you make of that? Well, people have to understand, and I, and I would include Cardinal Perlin in this, that China is now in the middle of a new high-tech cultural revolution. That is to say, the, the same errors that were propagated by Chairman Mao in the 1960s when we had a million red guards in Tiananmen Square waving their little red books and shouting slogans, uh, uh, praises of Mao Zedong, are now being repeated in China, mm. only in a high-tech fashion. Uh, everybody in China has to uh, download an app on their phone to study the works of Xi Jinping, including Christians and Catholics. Mm. And what is the app all about? The, you have to spend a half an hour studying the writings of Xi Jinping and then answer the questions to make sure you actually read the writings of Xi Jinping. Mm. And you have to do this on a daily basis. And the reason Christians are singled out for this activity is because they're being told by communist officials, you believe in God. You thank God for all the blessings of your life. You should be thanking uh, <laughs> Xi Jinping and you should be thanking the Chinese Communist Party for all the good things that flow to you. Mm. That's what's happening in China right now. You've also got song and dance troops going around the countryside in China, singing the praises of Xi Jinping, singing the praises of the Chinese Communist Party, telling people again they should worship the party and not God. Mm. This is an all-out effort to destroy all religious faith in China, and the Vatican is now caught up in this wave and is somehow defending an agreement that's being used to justify a crackdown on Chinese Catholics and Chinese Christians. Wow. It's terribly mistimed. Uh, the Vatican ought to do this. It ought to either publicly criticize the Chinese Communist Party and its leaders for the crackdown on religious freedom, 
or it ought to, at, the, at a minimum, make the terms of the secret agreement public so we all know what's in it, especially Chinese Catholics need to know what's in it. They need to know it's not a betrayal. Mm. And, and if that doesn't work, then let's withdraw from the agreement altogether. Let's not give the imprimatur of the Vatican on the activities that are occurring in China today. Wow. Uh, the Pope, in an interview with a Mexican journalist last week, had this to say when asked about the Vatican-China deal. He said, my dream is China. I love the Chinese very much. Relations with China are good, very good. The other day, two Chinese bishops came to me, one who came from the underground church and the other from the Patriotic Association, already recognized as brothers. What, what do you make of that comment? Well, I think that when Pope Francis um, looks at China, he sees uh, a country that, that he believes is merely socialist. He sees a country maybe that in his mind resembles Eastern Europe uh, under communism during the days of the Cold War. But in China, the, the, the cultural basis for any sort of understanding between the Vatican and the government is missing. There is no long, deep history of cultural Catholicism in that country. Mm -hmm. What there is is a long 2,000-year history of tyranny. Mm -hmm. There is a government in China that wants to be all things to all people. There is a leader in China, Xi Jinping, who wants to be the next Red Emperor, who mm -hmm. is, 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 wants to be, in the eyes of the Chinese people, uh, almost deified. He wants a personality cult. His picture is in the newspaper. His name is mm. everywhere. People are required to quote his sayings. Mm. They're required to read his writings. Uh, this is a cult of personality of the kind that we haven't seen in China since the days of Mao Zedong. Uh, we haven't mm. seen in a communist country for decades. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're dealing with in China, a regime that wants to turn all of China into uh, the Church of China, and the acolytes in that church will be the 94 million members of the Chinese Communist Party. And the head of that super patriotic Church of China will be none other than the new Red Emperor Xi Jinping himself. Now, there's no room in that formulation for an independent Catholic Church or independent evangelical churches or even for Tibetan Buddhism, Taoism, mm -hmm. and, and the Muslim faith. They're all being swept aside. Uh, their shrines, their temples, their churches are all being destroyed. But, Steve, what, you know, you can look at that, and we see this data, we see reports every day of the egregious human and religious rights abuses in China. In its 20th annual report on international religious freedom, uh, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom devoted an entire section to China as a tier one category, a category reserved for the worst offenders of religious freedom. China is in a category all alone, both in terms of scope and severity of attacks. The situation is getting worse. The report finds that up to 3 million people in China are currently in detention camps, as you mentioned, solely because of their faith, mostly Christians, Buddhists, and Muslims. Why are we seeing this crackdown of religious freedom now, and why do you think the Vatican is somehow disconnected from this or unaware of this, given that they're entering into these long-term agreements with this regime? Now, the, the, the Commission on International Religious Freedom, of course, not only put China as a tier one offender of freedom of conscience, of freedom of religion, they said that China is, quote, in a category by itself, and indeed it is. There are between one and three million uh, Kazakhs and Uyghurs and Tibetans in mm. the far west in concentration camps right now. Now, we don't know exactly how many because the camps are hidden. The Chinese government calls them vocational training camps. Mm. They're not vocational training camps. They're camps at which people are required to give up their ethnic identity, people are required to give up their religion, people are required to, to shout the slogans of Xi Jinping once again and, and, and uh, become useful drones to the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what's happening in China today. Mm -hmm. and, and how the Vatican can be oblivious to all that, I think that can only happen if they deliberately turn a blind eye to all the reports that are coming out of mm -hmm. China. Mm -hmm. Of course, Cardinal Zen, the great Cardinal Joseph Zen of Hong Kong, has done uh, all he can to bring the truth of what's happening in China, the persecution underway in China, to, to the light of the world. Um, I and others have been doing the same thing.
Uh, why isn't the Vatican listening? If the dream of Pope Francis is one day to go to China, I think that, that uh, the people in the Vatican need to understand this, that the Pope will never be invited to China as long as the Chinese Communist Party is the ruling party in China today. Mm -hmm. Remember that when the leader of China, Xi Jinping, visited Rome just oh. last month, Right. The Vatican reached out and said, we would be happy to arrange an audience between President Xi Jinping and Pope Francis. The Chinese turned them down flat because they did not want to give the leader of the Catholic Church the face uh, in the eyes of the Chinese people that such a meeting mm -hmm. would, would result in. Mm -hmm. It would imply that Xi Jinping and Pope Francis were somehow equals. Xi Jinping doesn't have any equals in China, and he's not about to create one by inviting Pope Francis mm -hmm. to visit that country. Yeah. Steve, you have written that the Chinese understand that China's conversion to Christianity would mark the end of this brutal system of rule. You expect the persecution of the church in China to intensify. What can be done to stop it? considering also the Vatican now uh, uh, collaboration with it. We have to be praying for our suffering co-religions in China. Uh, we have to end, I think, the Sino-Vatican agreement, which has been a disaster for the uh, Chinese faithful, and not just Catholics, as we talked about, but, but, but uh, other believers. And, and I think we, we have to ask uh, the Universal Church to consecrate China uh, to the care of the Blessed Mother in the same way that, uh, that we consecrated Russia mm. and the world uh, to the care of the Blessed Mother, uh, which led to the fall, I think, of the Soviet Union. In other words, I think we have to turn, in this case, to supernatural aid. Uh, in the natural, uh, there's very little we can do. Mm. We can criticize China from afar, and we can shame the leaders of China into maybe making some changes on the margins yeah. to their brutal policies. But make no mistake, things are heading in the wrong direction in mm -hmm. China. Uh, the persecution is getting worse day by day, and it is deliberate. It is the policy of the Chinese Communist Party laid out in a directive that was published shortly after Xi Jinping took power, a secret directive that we have a copy of, mm -hmm. in which he said that civil society is a threat to the continued rule of the Chinese Communist Party. The free market, free enterprise, is a threat to the continued rule of the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. The rule of law, property rights, a free press, all of these things are threats to the Chinese Communist Party, and they must be resolutely opposed. That was the beginning of this new high-tech cultural revolution. Mm -hmm. And as long as Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party are in power, that new high-tech cultural revolution, which is determined to stamp out religious faith in China and replace it with faith only in the party and Xi Jinping, that, that, that persecution will continue. Steve, I only have another minute. Uh, there's a new tactic China's using now to try to boost religious controls. They've begun these five-day Confucian cultural immersion courses for religious leaders, including members of the Patriotic Association, which they uh, presumably control. They say this is part of their sinization process. Your thoughts on what's going on here? Well, sinicization is the uh, equivalent to Nazification in the days of the Nazi regime in Germany, where the Nazis went into the churches and said, we're going to rewrite your Bibles, we're going to mm -hmm. put up pictures of the swastika in your churches, and you are going to preach homilies praising the Nazi party mm -hmm. uh, from the pulpit. China wants the same thing to happen. That's why they're treating Bibles as pornography and burning Bibles. That's why they're rewriting the Bible, creating their own. Remember that Confucianism is not a religion. Confucianism is a means of social control. It has no supernatural element whatsoever. It's simply a way of ordering society, where the emperor is the father to the people who are his children, where yeah. the older brother is supposed to be the ruler of the younger brother, and so on. So it's a matter of social control. So when they emphasize Confucianism, uh, that just means uh, they're not trying to force people to bow before the power of the government. They're trying to convince them to kowtow of their own accord hmm. before the power of the government. Terrifying and fascinating. Steve Mosher, thank you for being here. Uh, Steve's book, Bully of Asia, Why China's Dream is the New Threat to World Order, is available at bookstores everywhere and online. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Raymond.